Situationen är akut. Pandemin var ingenting jämfört med klimatkollapsen. Det som kommer kan vi inte ens föreställa oss. I'm sure by this point you're familiar with this pandemic of eco-terrorism. That's where these climate change activists go, especially it's a big thing in Europe. It's happened a little bit in the United States, though, too, where they basically run around and vandalize historic art, historic monuments and architecture uh, in the sake of protesting climate change. And we have a new one. This was yesterday in Stockholm, Sweden. Two women were detained in Stockholm after they threw some kind of paint at French artist Claude Monet and then glued themselves to the frame, Sweden's National Museum said on Wednesday. So here you go. Here's the video. There they are. This situation is urgent. Sirener kommer att ljuda oavbrutet, men ingen kommer hinna fram i tid. Förbjud torrbrytningen och återställ de jävla båtmarkerna. Vår hälsa är hotad. Själva grunden till hälsa är hotad. Som sjuksköterska kommer vi att kunna ge er någon trygghet. There they are. Vi kommer också drabbas av We will also suffer from famine, water shortages and conflicts. Vi kommer bara bli värre för längre tid. Vänta. Vad väntar ni på? Förbjud torrbrytning. All right. Yeah, so there's the video of them, uh, you know, destroying the Claude Monet painting all because of muck climate change. OK, now, listen, you look at this, you get angry. I get angry. We all are one in 100 percent agreement. These people are scum. They should be thrown in jail for life. They should face the most severe forms of punishment. Whatever altruism they think they're doing here is completely unfounded and unjustified. And. You know, a serious society would strike back at the full force of the law. I have to imagine. I know they did get detained. They probably just got released within 24 hours, maybe fined like $100 with no charges because that's the Western world. And that's part of why people do stuff like this, because there's no respect for anything. People don't take authority seriously because there is no authority. Uh, but regardless. To a large degree, though, we understand we all are in agreement that the eco terrorists are the worst people on the earth. OK, and, and we, we agree. But I think something also needs to be said about the people who are spreading the misinformation that is driving them to do this. OK, because first of all, you look at the silliness of their arguments. I know the liberals will say, I don't know if that's the right thing to do. But listen, they're genuinely concerned. Did you hear what they actually said? Did you read the little things? So they said we have to ban peat mining and restore the wetlands. This is, I, I suppose, in Sweden. So basically stop mining this, fix the wetlands, restore this one natural habitat. And apparently, according to them, that's going to fix climate change. How does that even make any sense? Because you claim it's all these emissions around the world, supposedly, that are causing all the, you know, climate change. If you stop mining one thing in one country and fix one place of the wetlands, that's going to stop climate change. That's not even scientific. That actually doesn't make any sense because none of the climate change people actually make any scientific sense when you really break down what they are saying. Um, but this is to say that the propagandists in the school system, in the media, across the Internet, you know, because they always talk about how dangerous conspiracy theories can read to re lead to real world consequences. But no one ever talks about the fact that the dangerous conspiracy theory of climate change is leading to real world consequences, because as much as the pe these people are scum and they should be punished largely for the inability to not think for themselves and largely for their lack of respect for authority. To a degree, I, I kind of understand. I'm not saying I'm justifying it. Because I'm not. They are scum. But I sort of understand why they do what, what they do. Because if you were told as a young person your entire life that the world is literally about to end, which is not true, that it's misinformation, the world is about to end because of climate change. We are all unanimously screwed. There's nothing we can do to innovate, to adapt to climate change. And so within the next five years, if the entire world does not have a total blackout where everyone basically starves to death, um... You know, you're you, we're all going to die. Right. And so that's what young people are told. They're told we're all going to die. And they're told that older people, the politicians or whatever, they're literally just sitting around and doing nothing about it. 
which especially in Europe and in the United States, but especially in Europe, is absolutely not true at all. Right. The, the European politicians are doing everything in their pa human power to appease the demands of these stupid idiot climate change activists to the detriment of the European quality of life. Looking at you, Germany, looking at, you know, the, the energy prices over in Europe, which are even worse than they are here. They're doing all of that. But again, there's this misinformation campaign being spread to young people that the world is literally about to end. They are about to die and old people and the politicians are doing nothing about it. So let me ask you a question then. OK, now I'm not saying it's right because they should be able to think for themselves. They're stupid. You can tell. But this is to say that the, the climate misinformation narrative is causing real world terrorism, because what would some people do as young people if they really believed they were going to die? Because that's what they were told. And the, po the political system, the Western order was doing nothing and just sitting around and being complacent in their death. Wouldn't you to a degree perhaps be a little bit radicalized if that's what you believe? Wouldn't you to a degree maybe say, wow, I need to take some drastic measure to get people's attention because the world's about to end. Do you see the danger of misinformation? I know I'm talking like liberal news media here, but it is actually true. It is actually true. All of this climate based eco terrorism is driven by the lies and they are lies. Let me make that clear that the world is about to end. OK. I'm not saying I'm not saying that the fact that, oh, look, the climate is changing. That's not a lie. OK, I'm not I'm not that much of a science denier. I'm just a science denier enough to say, well, it's not even science. The, none of the scientific stuff concludes the world's going to end. It just says, hey, well, we're going to the, the earth is be, according to their models, which are always wrong, by the way. But even their models say, well, the earth is going to become this much warmer as a result, sea levels will rise. We may deal with significantly worse uh, you know, weather events and stuff in some places that were once fertile agriculturally might not be fertile. And nowhere in that does it say the world's going to end. Oh, but we're going to have famine. We're going to have all the resource shortage. Perhaps that's true. But that also assumes that human beings can't innovate around resource sh shortage. And so you want to say, oh, Vince, what's your answer to climate change? Because you suggest we sit around and do nothing. That's not what I suggest, actually. Take sip of water. That's not what I suggest with climate change. I suggest that whether or not the climate is changing because of man-made emissions, which, you know, personally, I have an instinct. It may be slightly true, but it's probably very over exaggerated. And we've talked about the stream before about how they say the earth doesn't change in terms of hundreds of years, but it actually does. And we just came out of the little ice age at the start of the Industrial Revolution that coincides with the end of the mini ice age here on Earth. So you could also say that's part of the reason, you know, the climate is changing. Um, but regardless, regardless. Right. I look at it and say, even if you guys are right, even you guys are 100 percent correct. The United States is only 15 percent, I believe, of global emissions. Sweden, I'd have to imagine how much is Sweden, 2 percent, you know, probably much less than that. So even if you went 100 percent carbon free, not carbon neutral, carbon free, zero percent of the global emissions, you still would not do a dang thing because that's still what? 85 percent of global climate change. Who's driving most of the climate change? India, China, you know, the big the bigger countries on the planet. OK, and let's be realistic, unless you're going to go declare war on them or something. I mean, they're not going to stop using fossil fuels. So the way I look at it, if everything they said was true. Then what I would what I would say is not, well, then we need to all be gay hippies and drive electric cars to save the planet. I would look at it and say, if you your guys' incredibly alarmist predictions are actually true and it is that urgent, we are screwed. There is nothing we can do to bring down climate change. Because even if we, you know, returned America to the Stone Age, if we got rid of all gas powered anything, if we got rid of everything, zero percent emissions, you would still have a situation, right? Where 85% of global pollution is still happening. So I say to that, if that is the case, and if you guys are right, and we are going to face these resource shortages and droughts and all that stuff, and it's already kind of happening and taking off to an extent, then I say there's nothing we can do other than do what? What human beings have always done anytime climate has changed, resources have changed, whatever it is, and it's called adaptation and innovation. Okay. That is actually logically speaking, because you guys claim I just want to sit around and do nothing about it. That is actually the logical solution if it's really as bad as you guys say. 
Look at and if you say I'm illogical, look at your answer. What did those women say? Say they said ban peat mining and restore the wetlands. Okay, logically speaking, genius, how is that going to solve global climate change if one country stops mining? That doesn't even make any sense. You know, it does make sense saying, look, the climate's going to change. It always changes. By the way, there is no proof that any of these green policies actually can bring down or stop climate change. That, that's the other thing. You know, we, we have we have no idea whether, you know, driving a bunch of Priuses like gay hippies would actually even fix the climate. So to it, I say, right. If we're going to deal with more droughts, then fine. Then we need to start looking into ways to grow crops. I mean, it's the 21st century. We can we have a lot more technology and power than we did before. If the soil is going to be a little bit more dry, then let's look at the seeds or or just irrigate. Right. Or, or desalinization, bring in water from the ocean. I don't know. Or build irrigation dams from places that do have water, whatever it is. To me, I look at it and I say it's possible. You can build the infrastructure to get a, a, around this stuff. Every time there's a hurricane in the United States, the liberals always come along and say, oh, well, but climate change, see? And to that, I say, OK, OK, then then New Orleans has to make their levy stronger. We have to build better infrastructure that can handle hurricanes. That's the realistic answer. That answer says, hey, look, we're not going to be able to solve solve the world. I know. Imagine by imagine there's no climate change. We're not actually going to be able to do that. So realistically, let's figure out the best solution. The best solution is to innovate. But they don't propose innovation. They discourage innovation. And they, they just propose silly, nonsensical stuff. Like if you stop driving your cool car, then that'll fix climate change. At the same time, they totally reject nuclear energy, which is the most logical, efficient and scientific solution. And why do they do that? Well, because that would be too easy. That would make too much sense. What this is about is punishing you, punishing your way of life, making your way of life worse, which is precisely why, you know, that's why they say, hey, look, you're cool. Dodge Challenger. You can't drive that anymore. Says who? What? What? That's why that, that's what this is really about, which is another level of why I find climate change activists to be the complete scum of the earth. They are because they claim this is such a serious issue, but they're totally unserious about it. Right. And every solution they propose, you notice it always comes back to you basically have to live a terrible life. That's all that it is. And, and if there is a practical solution, like I have presented nuclear energy, innovating to get around climate change, they say, no, you can't have the practical, easy solution that makes sense because that would not punish punish you enough. Right. <laughs>guys vince dow here hope you enjoyed that clip from the vince dow show if you did be sure to leave a like and subscribe 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 if you are new to the channel and be sure to check out the vince dow show live every weeknight here on this channel at 8 p.m eastern time it is a great show many are saying this many are saying this